In the movie Inside 2023, an art heist goes wrong, trapping Nemo, played by Willem Dafoe, into a penthouse for days on end. In this video, we will look at the film, analyze the mistakes he makes, and try to figure out an escape route before it's too late. Let's go. We open in the middle of a high-stake art heist. Nemo is currently breaking into a secure penthouse apartment of a rich art collector. Everything goes according to plan and he gets inside from the terrace. With the help of his partners, he deactivates the alarm system and has 7 minutes to finish the job. He rushes through the incredibly huge apartment, bags the paintings he was going for, but can't find the main piece he was trying to get his hands on. After looking into different parts of the home, including this massive museum-esque video installation, he gives up and proceeds to get out of there again as fast as possible. But things don't go as planned. The moment he steps in front of the door, he notifies his partner who is hacked into the system to give him the activation code for the door. But unfortunately, the system malfunctions, causing the whole place to shut down, locking him inside. He tries to short-circuit the system, but ends up making things worse. He rushes over to the terrace door from which he entered and finds it shut tight as well. On top of that, the alarm is so loud that it actually seems to damage his hearing, which is quite a hazard and probably not something you want to have in your house. The alarm also doesn't seem to make much sense, as we get to see in a second. Nobody is being notified, not the police, not the security people of the building, which puts in question, why the f*** would you have this alarm system in your house? After he fails to escape, he opts for ripping out the alarm speakers and flashlights that have been persisting for the past minutes. Now, if I had entered a quasi-bunker that is more high-tech than Batman's hideout, I would not have relied on technology to get me out of here again. Nothing goes over good old mechanical ideas, my friends. The moment I had cracked open the terrace door, I would have pushed one of those massive pieces of furniture in between the door and the frame and ensured my way out. In fact, entering any place with the door locking behind you without having the actual key to open it again is a risk not worth taking. Whether we talk about a freezer, a giant oven, or this luxury penthouse here. Nemo starts with chipping away at the wooden main entrance door, hoping to get through. He chips until he realizes that there is a massive metal door on the other side. On top of that, the electronic system is not just faulty, but also seems to regulate the heat wrongly too. The temperature is climbing and will soon be another factor that we have to wrestle with. He goes to check the toilet for some water and finds that none of the sinks are working. They are flat out dry, which is kind of strange, isn't it? Even if water is electronically pumped throughout this place and the fallout would cause the pump to stop working, there is usually still some residue water left in the pipes. These sinks, however, are as dry as they can be. I check in the kitchen for some snacks and hopefully some liquids too, he finds that the refrigerator is working just fine. Hi there, how about an egg white omelette au fines herb and an avocado? Meaning that the electricity seems to still be working. But for some reason, certain parts of the apartment, such as the locking system, the water distribution, as well as the heat regulation, seem to be out of order. I guess it's just bad luck, isn't it? Animo grabs the only liquid he can find, some wine and later some vodka, and makes himself at home. Now, considering that he has no water at his disposal, this is the dumbest thing you could possibly do. Every child knows how dehydrating alcohol is. But regardless of that, with the temperature rising, no water accessible, and high proof alcohol in our blood, this penthouse is becoming the most luxurious death trap we have ever seen on this channel. But what is a death trap when you have caviar available, right? Who cares? Nemo puts up his feet and goes for a well deserved break. The TV seems to work as well, although a bit laggy, and he goes through the channels and comes across the CCTV network, showing pretty much the whole place. We see that the security downstairs is going about his job as usual without realizing that the most secure apartment in this building has been breached. At first glance, I guess this is a great thing, because it allows us to possibly escape unharmed, but it could also mean that we die in here if nobody comes for rescue in time. Either way, drinking alcohol and eating caviar on crackers with mold on is not a good idea, right? Having no access to water and then deciding to drink alcohol, plus ingesting food that will likely cause you a food poisoning with diarrhea of death, this guy is committed to become the worst survival-minded character ever written. 
The next morning, the temperature is above 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius and again keeps rising. What would you do in this situation? Well, intuitively, I guess you would go through the complete house, check out every corner and wall and try to figure out a weak spot to break out from. Generally, ventilation systems are safe ways in and out of rooms, so that would be a good place to start. On top of that, finding any device to communicate outwards with may be a good idea as well. He does find a computer and a landline, but just like the water, they don't seem to work. How does a TV work and fridge work, but everything else does not? Perhaps I'm missing something, but this seems a little bit too convenient, doesn't it? Anyway, Nemo proceeds to take a leak and commits yet another mistake. You see, water inside toilets is usually clean. There are definitely some germs in it, because duh, it's a toilet, but if there is no other source available, it's probably worth scooping out what's left before spoiling it with your own fluids. As the hours and later even days pass, it becomes obvious that Nemo can't find a way out. His top priority has shifted from escaping to surviving. Now he tries to drink the water off the fish tank and even the ice residues from the refrigerator. As far as I'm concerned, he can lick the interior of the fridge as much as he wants. I don't think it'll be enough to cover the recommended daily water intake though. But using the refrigerator is actually not too bad of an idea. With the right technique, you can actually increase condensation and therefore produce pretty significant water supplies using the fridge. We can lower the temperature of the refrigerator as much as possible and stuff it with as many items as we can. Ideally food items, as food is less likely to be contaminated and thus will produce safe to drink condensed water. We can put in as many clean containers as possible too, to gather the condensed water and put as much moisture absorbing material in them, like cotton balls, gay strips and towels. Basically anything that isn't toxic. You see, a fridge under certain circumstances can produce up to a pint of water a day, which is kind of crazy. Our character though opts for a completely different strategy. He looks up to the ceiling and figures that this abstract lighting system may be his way out. Why he would think that, I don't know, but better to have a plan than no plan, I guess. He starts building a makeshift pyramid ladder using pretty much anything he can find. But the way up there seems steep, so steep that he postpones his creation to tomorrow. At this point, the temperature has also climbed to over 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees respectively. But with the help of a massive bronze statue, he is able to break into the pantry, securing at least some canned food and suddenly, here is water flowing. He rushes out and finds that the botanical corner is being flooded with a sprinkler system. He tries the water and bingo, it's drinkable. However, after drinking a generous amount of it, he literally just turns on his back and soaks his body in the perfectly fine water. Now, as good as this feels, it's probably not a good idea, is it? It seems to be a timed sprinkler system, so water is limited. And being no botanical experts, who says that these plants are watered every day and not just, say, once a week? Not taking any chances here would be better. Just get as many containers as possible and fill them as quickly as you can. Fortunately, the plants seem to be watered daily as we can see them going off again in the near future and he does collect as much as he possibly can as well. So having enough water available will certainly help him survive for several weeks and with the food storage, albeit almost empty, he will likely make it easily for a month here before dying. So with food secured, the next thing, finding an escape. He continues with his pyramid structure hoping to get up there and he does. He starts chipping away at the frame but gives up pretty quickly again. Throughout this movie, we will see him attempting multiple times to try and remove the glass panel of this light fixture. But until then, there are quite a few more bizarre scenes that we need to cover. But first, the bronze statue with which he cracked open the pantry door looked pretty massive. If he can chip away concrete, he may be able to chip away at the window front as well. Not at the windows themselves, but at the intersection of the frame and the window. It's certainly worth a try, even if we assume that these windows are made from unbreakable glass, they would still be breakable under certain circumstances. Besides, everything has a weak spot, in this case, the frame. However, looking at the window front from this perspective, it may seem a little hopeless. What do you think? Let me know what you would do if you were stuck in here. 
Now, as the days pass, Nemo faces the mental challenges of increasing isolation. He often watches his CCTV channels to feel some sort of human connection. It's not clear how long he has been stuck in here at this point, but assuming that it's not more than two weeks, it seems a bit of a stretch to go crazy after such a short amount of time of being alone. I think it's a little exaggerated. He does, by the way, try to call Jasmine multiple times, the woman who is the cleaning maid of this building. She had come up and cleaned the area in front of the penthouse multiple times. But due to the massive door and the fact that she seems to always listen to music, his attempts failed miserably. On top of that, the heating system that has reached over 40 degrees Celsius at this point reverses and now rapidly declines and soon hits the low 40s Fahrenheit or 6 degrees Celsius. Not fun, but preferable to the heat he had experienced before. There is a wardrobe and many options at his disposal to put on layers of clothing. If it's just hot, well, you can't get more than just naked, right? But things take a sudden dark turn. Nemo, with a mental decline severe enough to have him on the verge of a psychotic breakout, comes across the worst possible thing to encounter in this state. A hidden room in a bedroom lit with green neon lights and a gummy corpse of some old dude. In that very same room, he also finds that self-portrait he was going for but couldn't find in the beginning. After this, his mental health issues start to become very obvious, as this was likely to be the tipping point or his break, as experts would call it. Suddenly, he is mesmerized by the various psychedelic images throughout this apartment and looks like a drooling kid not being able to follow his obnoxious math teacher's lecture. In order to avoid such rapid mental decline, he would have done well to regularly exercise. Basic compound exercises like squats, push-ups, sit-ups and some jogging for half an hour a day would have helped him keep his sanity. Various forms of meditation would have helped as well. I also want to mention that the complete and utter neglect he has towards this apartment is a very important and symbolic aspect of this film. Not only does it physically reflect his gradual mental decline, but it also adds to his deteriorating health. It's kind of like the question what came first, the chicken or the egg? Is he becoming sick because of the unhealthy environment or does the environment become unhealthy because he is? Does he poison his world or is the world poisoning him? Now, whatever you believe to be the case, the answer doesn't quite matter as much as the solution. The world doesn't magically adapt to your needs, this isn't the room of requirements. On the other hand, as a human being, you, and therefore Nemo here, have the power to create and produce change wherever you are. He would have done well to find an escape route without turning this house into a junkyard and instead kept it in good condition, simply because nothing good can sprout from bad soil. Anyway, his mental decline becomes so severe that he constantly engages in nonsensical self-talk and even builds an altar, a sign of a full-blown psychosis. During this film, he basically descends into madness and eventually starts to hope to be set free by the light fixture he has been chipping at for the past eternity. More symbolism. The light itself in the ceiling signifies his potential escape from suffering. But will he succeed? Well, as he continues chipping, he eventually trips and falls. He either fractures or at least badly injures his leg in the process. He duct tapes it back into place and has now an even slimmer chance of becoming free again. However, it must be mentioned that he made significant progress on the light above. He could unscrew several screws and loosen the panel so much that he may indeed has a chance to escape through it. But his recent injury set him back quite a bit. Now, more desperate than ever before, he uses a magnifying glass to spark up some flames in a bowl and ignite some paper, attempting to trigger the fire alarm. Now, he basically all of a sudden spotted a sensor sitting somewhere on the ceiling. This is something you should spot that latest on the second day of being trapped in here, and not a month later. I mean, it's a blinking device, right? It's hard not to see in a dark room. Anyway, the fire alarm he successfully triggers is just like the home invasion alarm at the very beginning, utterly pointless. Yes, the alarm sounds ear-piercingly loud, and yes, the whole apartment is being flooded so much that the whole floor is covered with inches of water, but nobody ever shows up. This place could literally burn down and nobody would give a shit. Now, thinking about it, he would have had a much better chance using the magnifying glass to signal for help at the window front. There are numerous reports of people being stuck in large buildings who, with the help of flickering lights or other light signals, have attracted strangers' attention and got freed. It's safe to say that he has been up here for well over a month at this point, saying this because we have actually glimpsed at his makeshift toilet at one point that I decided against showing to you, you're welcome, and therefore concluded that, yeah, it's been a while. 
had he used light signals consistently for over a month, chances are he would have been saved. Well, seemingly enough days pass for the flooded palace to dry out, and we see Nemo coming to the conclusion that it's time for the last try. He writes a poetic message onto the wall, explaining why he did what he did. And then he vanishes, with the camera basically panning through the place, eventually stopping at the pyramid in a wide shot, and then a close-up where we see, be it just for a split second, some shadow movement, indicating that he made it up. But did he make it through? Into freedom? Well, that is up for debate. But here's a text that he has scribbled onto the wall. Let me know what you think about this film, guys. Hope you've enjoyed my take on it. It was actually a pretty fun thing to write. Take care and catch you soon. Binge another one.